and nine. We've got one more day of pretty extreme heat before finally some changes and maybe some rain chances too. We'll talk about it coming up. But first, it is Memorial Day, a day to honor those who died in the war while serving our country. Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery, one of many focal points for ceremonies nationwide for all fallen veterans. It started with a wreath laying ceremony accompanied by speeches, song, a moment of silence, rifle volleys, and the playing of taps. This morning, we spoke to some people there who were honoring their loved ones. Those going to visit a loved one today at Fort Sam Houston, though, are encouraged to wait until one o'clock in order to allow the traffic from today's activities to clear out. As hundreds of families, though, visit Fort Sam Houston, the cemetery itself is undergoing a change. Patty Santos with the new director there who is working to create more room for veteran grave sites so that the cemetery lives on for many years to come. And we're coming up right here on Columbaria 4, which is brand new. 12,000 spaces for cremated remains will be available once construction and two more columbariums are complete. These areas are pre-placed pre -placed crypt fields. So underneath the surface of the soil are uh, concrete crypts, double crypts. 30,000 burial spaces are also being added, helping to extend the life of the cemetery to sometime in 2040. The five-year, $80 million expansion developed about 23 acres to the site, first designated as a national cemetery in 1937. One of our goals in the National Cemetery Administration is that no veteran ever dies. Jerry Leffler, the newest director of the cemetery, oversees the 55 staff who care for and maintain the dignity of the place where our heroes rest. This time of year, Memorial Day itself, we're expecting between five and 8,000 visitors throughout the day. Uh, but over the week, you know, we'll have hundreds if not thousands every day. Leffler, a retired Navy veteran, worked with the American Battle Monuments Commission, which operates the overseas military cemeteries in 17 different countries. Now being able to be here and director of this site, uh, working with the veterans community here in San Antonio at end of life care and working with the families, it's just a privilege and an honor. The 300 acres cemetery is the final resting place for over 180,000 veterans and family members. These are people from the local area who serve their country, who serve their country honorably, and now rest in a place of honor. Those like Clinton Smith. In November, the World War II veteran killed in action finally came home after his remains were identified. No veteran ever dies, and to have him come full circle from the beaches of Italy back to Texas was a well, great pleasure for us. Patty Sun Honoring and remembering the military lives lost fighting for our freedom. Also, the central message last night at the VFW Post 76 downtown. It's the oldest post in Texas, honoring a Memorial Day event, welcoming military members, veterans, and their families. The goal here, to remember the sacrifice so many brave servicemen and women have made for our country. Mayor Ron Nuremberg was the event's special guest. Our most sacred obligation, especially in this community, is to honor the, the families uh, who serve. And on a, on a weekend of Memorial Day, uh, that's a obligation that is recognized across the country. It just so happens that here in San Antonio, it's every day of the week. We want to see how you are spending your Memorial Day. Do you have a family member you'd like to honor? Maybe you're visiting a military cemetery today or volunteering there. You can go to KSAT Connect and submit your pictures. Just scan this QR code and it'll take you straight there. Today, most city offices are closed for Memorial Day, but the public library and animal care services are also closed too. Public safety and emergency services like uh, the police department obviously are going to be operating like normal. For a full list of closures, all you have to do is head over to ksat.com. We now know the name of the 80 year old woman who died after she was shot while simply riding in the back seat of a vehicle. She and her SUV got caught in the crossfire during a fight between teenagers on the ground. 
San Antonio police say that Heidi Silkworth was hit in the head by a bullet during the gunfight at around 10 o'clock last night. It happened near East Indianola and East Cesar Chavez, just south of the Tower of the Americas. Police say a 15-year-old was also shot and is in critical condition. The SUV with Silkworth inside was simply driving by when it got in the line of the bullets. She died at the hospital. So far, no arrests have been made. In Galveston over the weekend, dangerous rip currents took two people underwater, killing them. Galveston Island Beach Patrol saying 26-year-old man was drowned on Saturday afternoon when he got caught in that dangerous tide. A 19-year-old woman drowned early yesterday as well. Both taken underwater by those strong rip currents and other swimmers also put in danger. Officials with Beach Patrol say that they performed at least 4,300 measures to prevent more drownings just on Saturday alone. Now to those severe storms affecting millions across the plains and in the south with at least 18 people across multiple states getting killed over the holiday weekend. ABC's Rena Roy with the latest of the damage the storms left behind. Storm after storm in state after state on this holiday weekend. The east now getting hit following this extreme weather from Illinois to Texas. An EF2 tornado touching down in Valley View, Texas, about an hour north of Dallas. Governor Greg Abbott says multiple people have been killed across the state, including a two- and five-year-old from the same family. The governor signing a disaster declaration for more than a third of the state. Kennedy has been a harrowing week with lives lost, property reduced to rubble. The hopes and dreams of Texas families and small businesses have literally been crushed by storm after storm. In Arkansas, similar scenes of destruction, buildings collapsing and roofs ripped off of homes. We felt it hit the house and just felt it started sucking air up through the, through the walls and the windows. I heard the roof go. Um, I started worrying about my brother because, of course, his house was out here in the middle of it all. In Oklahoma, hail the size of baseballs. Millions of Americans still facing the threat of damaging winds, large hail, and possibly tornadoes. And all of this comes as we see record-breaking travel this Memorial Day weekend. There have been nearly 30,000 flight delays and cancellations since the holiday weekend kicked off on Thursday, many of them blamed on the weather. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Meantime here, it's the heat, 95 degrees already today. Uh, you got to have to be careful outside. Oh, it hardly seems fair. Not only is it so hot, but it's so humid. And those, those two things combined have just made for a really tough weekend as far as the being outside is concerned. And of course, you just saw the severe weather going across North Texas. Uh, it's been a busy stretch. So first off, I want to take you back and look back at the last few days. These are the peak heat index numbers. So this is where we uh, hit both Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And the heat index was 112, 114, 110. I mean, this is dangerous heat. Uh, from what I can tell, this is some of the highest, the highest heat indices we've seen in May ever here in San Antonio. And it's also the earliest for our excessive heat warning uh, that has been issued for the area that we've ever seen in late May. And the forecast for today calls for the heat index to be anywhere from 108 to 112. We're already there. Heat index already feels like 109. Good news here is we're going to see things get less hot. I don't want to say cooler because it's going to be generally just less hot. But there's the forecast for today. And very quickly, I'm going to go back to the heat index. This is the current heat index. We've jumped up even higher now. 111 is what it feels like at this hour, noon hour. Be so very careful if you're going to be outside. I know there is a ton of people outside, uh, you know, with, with it being a holiday weekend. Uh, we just can't emphasize that enough because heat uh, illness can set in quickly. Uh, we're thinking 102 today for the air temperature. Obviously, the heat index is going to be much higher than that. Relief. Well, we get a little bit tomorrow, and I think we will get some showers and storms back in the forecast. We'll talk about when and what the temperatures will look like going forward coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Oh, yeah. As Justin just said, it is hot and due to get a lot hotter this afternoon. The good news, though, is that there are cooling centers all over San Antonio that are open. We have a link to that list of locations. Just use the QR code you see at the bottom of your screen. 
Places like libraries, senior centers, and park community centers are locations that people can go and cool off during regular hours, and more cooling centers are going to be open, as we said, for Memorial Day today. Happening today, save a life, get a ticket to a soccer game, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, and the soccer team, San Antonio FC, teaming up for today's blood drive. The Memorial Day drive started at 9 o'clock this morning. It's going to go for another almost two hours till two this afternoon. It's at Toyota Field. Those who donate blood are going to get two tickets to the San Antonio FC versus Memphis FC game. That's coming up this Saturday. A 98-year-old veteran wants people to understand what he and his shipmates went through during World War II. Hear his story and his message after the break. As we honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice, we are shining a spotlight on some of the nation's most senior heroes who served in World War II. ABC's Danny New introduces us to three of them. On a decommissioned aircraft carrier turned museum in New York City's Hudson River. I was on an attack transport ship. 98-year-old Arthur Grabiner is on a mission to make sure people understand what he and his shipmates went through while serving in World War II. I figure it's a duty that I owe this generation. This is Bob getting ready to load his uh, display up. And 500 miles south in North Carolina, 80-year-old retired Master Sergeant Bob Duke is delivering yet another shipment. Welcome to our garage. As he continues his now enormous operation of collecting lost golf balls at various courses and then selling them to support the Wounded Warrior Project. In the past 12 years, Bob and his wife Vicki have raised more than $500,000 to help veterans who are healing. I said, I'm going to start giving them money because I live on a golf course and people need golf balls. All over the country, veterans are still serving their country and communities, and some are even finally getting the recognition they always deserved like 100-year-old retired Corporal Benjamin Berry, who still remembers serving during the most pivotal moments of World War II, like the Battle of Normandy. You could hear the rockets going overhead. While serving in an all-black unit 80 years later, Benjamin still carries with him the racism that he and his comrades all experienced. Here we are in our uniforms representing, you know, the United States, and they won't even let us eat in their restaurant. <laughs> At Philadelphia's Veterans Day Parade this past year, Benjamin was honored as the Grand Marshal. He said he was grateful, even if it still felt surprising. People actually appreciate it and show it. It's really mind-boggling and worth it. And this past March, Benjamin also received the highest honor bestowed by the French government, the French Legion of Honor. Of course, so well-deserved. In New York for ABC News, I'm Danny New. Take a look outside with live cam. Some advice, drink a lot of water. Maybe try coconut water for the first time. You might need it today. Coconut water, that's, that's a new one. You're right. Three uh, times the potassium. Okay, morning stuff. Uh, so very hot today, it's true. And you gotta be so careful outside. Temperatures are already in the mid 90s. Heat index values are already above 110. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, pollen for today. It's low, molds are low at 440. So no big deal there, but we are gonna talk about air quality coming up after the break. It's not so great. And as we look at the aquifer, well, it didn't change today. It's at 632, but that's a bad number. We need rain, we need it. Uh, we're gonna talk about when we might get some also coming up. With a lot of kids out of school today and people off of work, everyone is either going to be staying inside where it's nice and safe to get out of the heat or they're going to be looking for a cool place. The city has 11 swimming pools that are open to the public that you can visit today. You can find the list of locations on KSAT.com. The city pools are going to be open from 1 to 7 o'clock. It's free to hang out there, but children under 10 must have an adult with them. And here's another cool idea, splash pads. There are several around the city that you can choose from and they're also free to visit. You can find a list of splash pads in our area on KSAT.com as well. And don't forget, put on a little sunscreen while you're at it. I was mentioning 
coconut water because it's got hydration like potassium and all those good things that you want okay. in there and it can help you avoid heat stroke um, pretty quickly. Good to know. Uh, and this is a day where if you, it can catch up on you so quickly. It, it really for can. Like an hour, you may not notice it right away, but uh, it can happen so fast. So be so very careful. I know we've said this a million times and you folks live in South Texas, you know how this goes, but this heat is a little above our normal standard, okay? And uh, let's first start with a look outside. 93 in San Antonio, 93 in New Braunfels, 87 in Tequimba. Look at Kerrville. Very rarely is Kerrville our hottest spot, but uh, there it is. 98 right now in Kerrville. Almost assured that you will get above 100 this afternoon. You know, the thing about Kerrville, though, is the humidity is a little bit lower. We have some slightly drier air trying to work in from the west. It just has not got to San Antonio yet, and I don't know that it will. The other thing we've got to worry about is the air quality. We noticed the air quality has come down a little bit around San Antonio, so this orange color is uh, what we would say uh, unhealthy for those who are sensitive to that kind of thing, meaning most of us will be okay with this kind of air quality, but if you have asthma or respiratory issues, you may notice we still have some of that smoke in the atmosphere. And you get down to the coast, it gets much worse. So Bevo, Victoria, down to Corpus Christi, the air quality is not great and has not been for several days now uh, with that smoke funneling in. You know, part of the problem too is the air is just so incredibly thick. Honestly, we don't see dew points like this all that often. Uh, a dew point near 80 in San Antonio it happens on rare occasions, but uh, this is just incredibly thick air. And we do have some places recording dew points above 80, which is pretty incredible. So the air is very thick. Now, I mentioned slightly drier air trying to work in from the north and west. So Kerrville and Fredericksburg, dew points are down just a hair. That's helping. Uh, with heat indices, you know, it's 98 in Curvo with a heat index of 101. But where we have that dew point of 79 in temperatures in the 90s, look at our heat index here in San Antonio, 111, 112 at Port SA, 104 in Poteet, uh, you name it. This is, this is tough weather to be out in. And as we look at the satellite picture, one reason temperatures have gotten so hot so quickly is unlike the last few days, the low clouds have burned off. Uh, and they did so... Uh, very, very quickly this morning. So there's one little area here of clouds force fill over to Pleasanton where uh, we're still seeing mostly cloudy skies. Otherwise, everyone else is seeing a lot of sun. I want to show you the reservoir levels real quick because I know a lot of people are going to be out at the lakes today and uh, these are all pretty much in bad shape with the exception being LBJ, of course, a steady level lake. Uh, but these numbers are way down. Of course, Canyon, record lows. The rivers are flowing slow. Most of them are, there's water in them, they're just not flowing very fast. So if you're tubing or out on the lakes today, just know it's, uh, it's not ideal, but it is doable. And there are the heat alerts. We have excessive heat warnings in place for much of our area. And then there is a small severe weather risk today too. We need to mention that. I don't know that we're going to see a lot, but if we are to get a storm to develop this afternoon, there is a chance it could go strong to severe. We'll keep an eye on it. I actually think our better chances of rain, which, by the way, it shows a few more storms out west tonight around 9 o'clock, but those fall apart before making it to San Antonio. Our best next chance of rain is going to come Tuesday night. We're going to watch what develops out across parts of West Texas. It's possible these storms coalesce, come together, and then make a run for South Texas and Central Texas. This is around 10 o'clock tomorrow. Like this particular model shows some storms around, which would be fantastic, but I'll tell you it's not a slam dunk. We got to really watch what happens out in West Texas tomorrow and see how that comes together. And if it does cluster together, I think there's a chance we could get some rain out of it, which would be fantastic. The severe risk tomorrow does include San Antonio for a two out of five risk, meaning it's a little more elevated. So 102 today, 96 tomorrow. That's that slight cool down. And we have bring, uh, brought up rain chances Tuesday night into Wednesday morning to 30%. More small chances throughout the rest of the week and temperatures back into the mid-90s. It'll still be humid, but we won't be getting those extreme heat index values like we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. Look at the difference. Yes. It's a lot. Thank you. Yep. Art can take and be seen in many different forms. One man in New Braunfels showcasing his artwork, but it doesn't take a paint or a paintbrush. A New Braunfels man is turning people's dirty surfaces into something special without using your normal art tools like paintbrushes or actual paint. Avery Everett introduces us to Sam Ward and the unique art that he makes.
Now you're in the groove. Yeah. Every artist has a style, and Sam Ward says he likes to make his art in the mundane. I, I don't like to paint. Um, I don't like color. There's no brush and no paint needed for this project. Just his trusty old power washer. The red one is your sharp pencil. This is less about the cleaning and more about the creativity. One of my wife's favorite jokes is, hey, can you actually go do some cleaning with one of those? As his canvas is this concrete, and his mission is to create something beautiful. How intricate can you go with the details? You know, I can go pretty intricate. He's created more than 100 designs, all using different surfaces. I have different folks who kind of donate their dirty driveways. But his neighbors in New Braunfels aren't the only ones watching. Just some B-roll. As millions of people tune in through social media to see his artwork sure. every week. So far we've got the cat. I've had some really interesting opportunities that I, I could have never expected. This work has taken him across the world. I mean, could you have imagined that you'd go to Chicago or Orlando for that? Listen, for this? I, I couldn't have imagined that people would have paid me money to do this. But home is where the heart is. Do you like to draw like your dad does? A lot. I have a lot of drawings in my room. And home is where his art is. Do you like coloring at the end? Yes. Yeah. As Ward fills in these final details, his driveway is now full of designs. It's all been so spontaneous. But he says his work as a power washing artist is far from ever being finished. All right, we'll call that done. How about that? Work for y'all? I love it. Now you're going to have a little piece of KSAT with you for, what, the next four to six months? Yeah, four to six <laughs> months or something. Over the next week, you may see one of Ward's artworks in a new Braunfels Park. We have the details on that project on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Sam, I've got a dirty driveway waiting for you. Still ahead, Election Day. It's tomorrow. The runoff race for the Bear County Precinct 1 Commissioner has been heated. What both candidates are saying and the claims that they are still standing by. Election Day is tomorrow and the Democratic runoff race for Bear County Precinct 1 Commissioner has been a heated one. As our Daniela Ibarra explains, the claims the candidates are standing by, along with the accusations of the broken promises and lies. They're hard to miss. The faces of the two women in the Democratic runoff for Bear County Precinct 1 Commissioner plastered on signs all over Southwest Bear County. Even with the political pushback, incumbent Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores has no doubt she'll keep her seat. I have run a clean campaign on my record. Um, fortunately, my opponent um, has decided to um, put misinformation out there and try to mislead the constituents because she does not have a platform. What Clay Flores calls misinformation is what her opponent, Dr. Amanda Gonzalez, says is exposing lies. It's been, you know, just deceiving the public um, at its finest. In a since deleted Instagram post, Clay Flores highlighted endorsements, including one from Somerset Mayor Lydia Hernandez. Hernandez tells KSAT she supports Clay Flores, but didn't endorse her. Where do you think this miscommunication happened? Or do you think it was a miscommunication? It was not a miscommunication. She, she's putting misinformation out there. You would have to ask her why. Hernandez says she wants to stay, quote, neutral in local political disputes to avoid potential repercussions. These mailers sent out by Clay Flores' campaign have raised more issues. The commissioner claims to have voted to approve 64 new deputy sheriff positions. No, and I'd like to say why. The Deputy Sheriff's Association of Bear County says her votes contradict that. Good, I stand by it. I am proud of it. Um, I have facts of when I voted for, for what. I have supported law enforcement, and I'm proud of my record. The commissioner says she helped establish a new substation in Northwest Bear County. It's a temporary facility out on Tally Road in Alamo Ranch. The Deputy Sheriff's Association says the facility isn't comparable to a full-fledged substation. It's why Gonzalez filed a complaint with the Texas Ethics Commission against Clay Flores. What do you hope comes out of this complaint? Well, I hope that, you know, once and for all, um, it, it allows her to, to make a statement and I urge her to make a statement to clarify that what she is printing in, in her mailers is incorrect. What do you think about that? I think it's pretty ridiculous. I am certain that they will investigate and dismiss it because it has no means. Someone's going to be listening to this and say, well, it's the week before election day. <clears throat> you know, you're trying to win this seat. Is this just for show? No, it's not just for show. The one thing that I say is that do your homework when it comes to her voting record. 
That was Daniela Ibarra reporting. Now, back in November, Clay Flores got more than 46 percent of the vote. Gonzalez got 20 percent. The polls open at 7 o'clock tomorrow, and they close at 7 p.m. That race in District 1, one of several that will be decided tomorrow. The KSAT Vote 2024 webpage is full of helpful information like polling places, sample ballots, and more. And don't forget, KSAT will also live stream a special runoff election show online after the news ends at 6 tomorrow night. You can watch this on any of our streaming platforms. At least 45 Palestinian civilians are dead after an Israeli attack that the prime minister there is now calling a horrible mistake. It caused an explosion and a fire that quickly swept through a refugee camp in Rafah. ABC's Christiane Cordero has the latest details. An overnight airstrike in western Rafa now triggering an investigation today after dozens of Palestinian civilians were killed in a refugee camp. Gaza's health ministry, run by Hamas, says Israeli fighter jets launched missiles at shelters in what had been designated as a humanitarian zone. The IDF disputes the claim that this was a humanitarian zone. The explosion caused a fire that rapidly spread throughout the camp as people tried putting the flames out. Hundreds are injured and the death toll is expected to rise. This woman cries they have no friends or family left and can't identify their loved ones. The IDF says the incident is under review. It claims the strikes killed two senior Hamas officials and that they're aware of several civilians in the area that were harmed. Any loss of life, civilian life, is grave uh, and is, uh, is awful. Um, we seek to go after Hamas and limit civilian casualties and uh, we will investigate if an investigation uh, is needed. Hours before the Western Rafah strikes, the IDF says Hamas fired rockets from Rafah into Israel. It was Hamas's first rocket launch towards Tel Aviv in at least four months. Two people were injured. According to Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry, the war has killed nearly 36,000 Palestinians. That number includes civilians and fighters. Israel blamed civilian deaths on Hamas's strategy to operate in densely populated residential areas. Christian Cordero, ABC News, Washington. In New Guinea, a landslide burying as many as 2,000 people on Friday. Now the government there is formally asking for international help. Workers have been seen digging through the mud and the soil after large rocks and boulders fell from a mountain nearby. Overturned cars and buildings damaged in the town. Estimates of the casualties have varied widely since that disaster happened. Tributes and reaction pouring in from all over the world over the loss of 30-year-old pro golfer Grayson Murray. Murray withdrew from a tournament on Friday saying he was ill. The next day, though, his family announced he was dead. Murray's parents later confirmed their son died by suicide. The two-time PGA Tour winner had previously been open about his struggles with mental health and alcoholism. If you or someone you know is dealing with suicidal thoughts, help is always available from the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline all you have to do is call 988. We are on heat watch today. This is a very dangerous day to do exercise outside. I went bright and early, crack of dawn, to ride some horses, and it was at, by 9 o'clock we, we needed to be done. Yeah, the humidity is so high. But the other thing we, we saw this morning, Ursula, unfold is that these clouds unlike the last couple of days, moved out of here quickly. So we're already seeing full sun. We got the really thick humidity, and that's resulting in some pretty ridiculous heat index values already. Last half hour, we were at 111 for that feels like number. We've gone down a little bit to 109, but look, this is still dangerous territory. Excessive heat warnings are in effect today, and rightfully so, with these kinds of numbers. And as air temperatures go up, uh, you may see these uh, heat index values go back up above 110. Uh, as you go outside for you there, you see the blue skies and look at the weather story. Uh, there is a small storm chance today. Uh, if we were to see a storm, then it could be strong. I just think the odds of a storm popping up are rather low. If we're going to see one, I think it's probably going to be in the hill country. And uh, cooler, 
uh, maybe cooler is not the right word, not as hot rest of the week uh, with temperatures falling back into the mid 90s versus these triple digits. And yes, heat index values will get better. Uh, the, the even better news is that we're watching for some storms out in West Texas that could arrive into our area Tuesday night. Uh, this would be our next best chance of rain. Uh, so that will all hinge on kind of what develops out there uh, the next couple days. We're going to talk more about that and what temperatures look like the rest of the week coming up in just a few minutes. Ursula. Thank you, Justin. Graduating high school is an accomplishment in and of itself, but getting your associate's degree before you get your high school diploma? Hmm, that's different. When we come back, Tiffany Huertas introduces us to a great graduate. Usually you go through high school and then if you're lucky, you go to college. But today's great grad did just the opposite. Tiffany worked us with a student who took advantage of a local early college program, which got her ready for the next chapter in her life. The work is hard and it's rigorous, but we have a lot of support here. While the course load could be demanding, Trinity Adams says the growth and educational opportunities changed her life. My main reason for being here is to just get a head start on my education, and I think it's really helped me out in the long run. Adams just graduated with her associate's degree, and next month, she will be graduating from St. Phillips College Early College High School. So I've been accepted into Wesleyan University in Connecticut with a full ride package. Adams says her educational experience, volunteer work, and essay helped her get into this university. My essay was about the struggles that I went through growing up, basically through elementary school. My family had a really rough patch during that time, and it was really about how Using that, I realized that when I go to school, nobody really knows what's going on when I'm not there. So I linked that in to not judging people by what they look like, because you never know what's really going on in their lives. This program helps lead students to high wage and high demand careers. This program literally changes the trajectory of students' lives. Some of our students in this area are part of the lowest uh, socioeconomic in our community. And for our community to have this opportunity means that that does not have to be their future. Adams wants to study computer science or mathematics. She is thankful for this experience and her support system. I think what's really kept me going is my mother. She's always been there to support me, my whole family even, but I have a lot of support coming from all around me. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And good luck to her. Look at outside with live cam, Justin. All we can say is try to stay cool. And if you know somebody whose AC is out yeah. or having some issues, check on them. Uh, that's a really good point. Uh, you want to check on uh, anyone who does not have AC, some of our elderly uh, neighbors, make sure they're okay with this kind of heat. It, it does get into the dangerous territory. It says 93 here. Uh, I know on your screen it says 96, but this is the top of the hour. This will go up. This is just the high so far. Uh, 80 was the low this morning. We only got down to 80. That was it. The record is 100. You know what? I think that's in jeopardy. Uh, that was set back in 2011. I think we certainly can get there this afternoon. After today, though, things do get better and we have some rain potentially in the forecast. We're going to talk about it. Come on. Both Justin and I have had heat exhaustion in our lifetimes, mm -hmm. maybe more than once, and, and it's no joke. And so yeah. if you, you're outside and you're being active at, or just outside mm -hmm. and you get a headache, you start to get dizzy, you have problems moving your limbs, get some help right yeah. away get some shade get some water get inside uh we can't emphasize that enough uh with the, with these kind of temperatures it can happen really really fast and i know we've been saying that all morning but it's it bears repeating uh let me first start with uh, what's going on uh, outside and we'll take you to uh, the time lapse because we did start off with some cloud cover this morning uh, but look how quickly it went away and then now uh, we got the blue skies out there a little hazy still yes but uh, the sun is uh, definitely beating down on us. 93, but it feels like 111. 
And I'll show you why here in just a second, why that heat index is so extreme. Winds are out of the east southeast at about seven miles per hour. And thankfully, we do have a little bit of a breeze earlier. There was no breeze at all. I mean, we had calm winds, uh, which makes it feel that much worse. But the dew points, well, when you get a dew point near 80, that is honestly about as thick as air can get. We don't get uh, dew points above 80 all that often. It's rare around here for us to have that much humidity in the atmosphere. But that's where we are. You got an 80 degree dew point in Pleasanton, Gonzales. We're right there in San Antonio. I mean, this is really, really thick air. There is some dry air that's trying to come into the hill country. We see that in Fredericksburg and Kerrville, but it has not made it to San Antonio. So with that in mind, the heat index is going to continue to stay extreme. 111 here in San Antonio, Port SA, 109 Stinson, 109 Converse. These are the feels like numbers. And it gets a little bit better actually in the hill country, despite the fact they have higher temperatures there. And that has to do with that slightly lower humidity, but this probably gets worse before it gets better. Uh, 100 by three o'clock, that's the air temperature that feels like 110. 102 at four o'clock. And then we do start to add in some very small rain chances this evening. There is a possibility of a stray storm popping up. I'm just not too confident in it. If, if we do get a storm, uh, then it would be strong to severe. We've got a ton of energy in the atmosphere. It's just a matter of if we can get it going. And by 80, uh, by 11 o'clock, 83, 20% chance of rain still. We'll keep it going through the night. Uh, right now, as we look at the visible satellite picture, most places have cleared out. We've got some high clouds out west. Still some low clouds hanging on from Howitzville over to Gonzales. Uh, but certainly not here in San Antonio. And there's a look at the heat alerts. Excessive heat warnings are in pink here, and these extend from Houston to San Antonio, Austin, uh, down to the valley, and then heat advisories around that. Uh, we're definitely the hottest place in the country. I think it's uh, not even a contest. The severe weather risk today, highest up around Waco and Dallas on a scale of 1 to 5, a 2 up there. We're at a 1. Storm Prediction Center does have us in a slight risk again if if a storm develops then it would be strong to severe that this particular model wants to uh, develop some storms in the hill country i think that's possible maybe a few storms moving in from mexico tonight around del rio we'll also watch that uh, but here in san antonio 20 percent or less tomorrow i actually think our rain chances increase but it's going to take until tuesday night so this is tuesday at five o'clock still pretty quiet and by the way a little cooler tomorrow we're going to have very very weak frontal boundary but it does help to bring temperatures down five, six degrees. Uh, but with storms out west, and this is where we'll watch that development, if they can come together into a cluster of storms, uh, it looks like they could work east. And if they held together, we could get some rain here around San Antonio, uh, perhaps Austin. I wouldn't pay too close attention to the exact placement of where this rain is because it's all gonna depend on how everything evolves out west where these outflow boundaries set up. But I think probably our best shot comes Tuesday night with the potential for showers and storms. And the Storm Prediction Center actually just changed this on us. Uh, they've updated it to now have a higher severe weather risk for the Hill Country tomorrow on a scale of one to five, a three. So that's an update. And then here in San Antonio, still at a two. So that's gonna bear some watching tomorrow. We'll certainly uh, be here to keep you apprised of the situation. 96 tomorrow, there's your 30% chance of rain Tuesday night, 94 Wednesday. Uh, and then we'll keep small chances in there. Uh, we'll watch for sort of a similar scenario where anything that devel develops to our west and northwest will have the potential to move down in our direction. And we'll keep our fingers crossed that it just brings some rain. That's what we really want. No severe weather, just some good rain, Ursula. I liked where those uh, storm chances appeared on your map. Let's keep them there. I agree. All right, as long as it hits San Antonio for change. All right, Grammy winners battling it out on the Billboard chart, and The Muppets' first movie returns to the theaters. That and more after the break in today's Hollywood Minute. Baby, I think you were made for me. Somebody write down the recipe. Billie Eilish has outdone herself. The nine-time Grammy winner's new album, Hit Me Hard and Soft, debuted with 339,000 equivalent albums sold, her best first week ever. It wasn't quite enough to knock Taylor Swift from the top spot on the Billboard 200 album chart. The Tortured Poets Department is number one for the fifth straight week. Yeah, well, I've got a dream too, but it's about singing and dancing and making people happy. 
Kermit the Frog and Friends are back. 1979's The Muppet Movie is returning to theaters for its 45th anniversary, with screenings on Sunday, June 2nd and Monday, June 3rd. Head to FathomEvents.com for theater locations, showtimes, and tickets. Humming the Rainbow Connection in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Now, aside from boats, there is another water vessel that's getting a workout on this Memorial Day, tubes. The river in New Braunfels is full of them, but also with a new type of watercraft. Daniela Ibarra with what the outfitters are experiencing today. Making a splash into the summer, hundreds of South Texans plan to cool off by spending a couple of hours on the river. Yellow tube, your tube, it doesn't matter. We've got an opportunity either way. Shane Wolf is the director of Land of Falls out in New Braunfels. He and other outfitters are preparing for a wave of visitors. And everybody's excited to get back on the river. We are expecting crowds like we haven't seen before with our big increase in population. We anticipate it to be very busy as usual. Uh, lots of visitors, lots of tourists, uh, lots of people tubing on the rivers. It's why the city of New Braunfels wants visitors to plan ahead. Ordinances are in place to keep the river clean and to keep you safe. This year, the city's Parks and Rec Department is closing the tube chute at 7 p.m. on the weekends. That's when our operations stop and uh, that was uh, an area that we have had some issues from in the past. The city says that isn't impacting outfitters. This year we're introducing Hydra's paddle boards. Stacy Figpen with Paddle Texas is excited to take advantage of the moonlight. It's amazing to see the smiles, changes in the tone of voice, just how much people are more relaxed and more in tune when they get off the river at night. Despite the lack of rain, Outfitters say they won't let that drain the fun. Come enjoy it. Treat it as it is your own. From that point, Mother Nature's blessed us and we hope to give back. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News.